the Big Thicket National Preserve. Different from a park, this was actually the first national preserve in America that protected this land just like a park, but with a few caveats because this place is so unique. Oh wow, this brings back some memories. So if you grew up in Southeast Texas like I did, then you probably took numerous field trips to the Big Thicket. However, it wasn't until I was much older, you know, had a little bit more maturity that I began to realize like what a special place this is. It's swampy, it's woodsy, it's got creeks, it's got rivers, streams, snakes, alligators. It's this incredible ecosystem, actually nine ecosystems in fact. And if that wasn't enough, it's got carnivorous plants. You know what that means, Daniel? What does that mean? Plants that eat meat. What? Bug meat. Just don't go inside. Feed me Seymour! And here to help us navigate through the thicket is park ranger Max Harper. Uh, explain to me just how big the big thicket is. I'm having trouble kind of getting my head around it. Historically, this place would have been about four to six million acres, but today we preserve about 113,000 acres today. 113,000 acres, and that's this red border I see? Absolutely, so what you're gonna see here, bigger land units all over the property out there. That was actually the original acquisition, and then the water corridors were added later, and that's where you see the river, uh, the creek, the bayou, all this kind of connective tissue, if you will. Okay, why was the federal government interested in protecting all these little creeks, river corridors, and piney woods? The general answer is our biodiversity. Um, more plants and animals coexisting here in a relatively small area than potentially anywhere else in the entire North American continent, wow. including even Canada or Mexico. The Big Thicket has been called America's Ark. Think of it like the rainforest of North America, but with eight additional ecosystems all in one little corner of Texas. Another thing is the culture and history here is really pretty rich as well. This is actually the first ever national preserve. It happened as a compromise. The government wanted a national park here, but East Texans said, no way, we're giving up hunting and fishing on this land. And so they struck a deal. The Big Thicket became a preserve. It's protected like a park, but the public can still use the land and collect its bounty like they have for generations. So we're out here in our Hickory Creek Savannah unit. It's one of the nine ecosystems we find in the preserve. So uh, tall pines, kind of exactly. swampy underbrush. Spot on, a wet unit, uh, primarily populated by longleaf pine, which you see all around us here. Uh, but one of the most special things about this unit is it's a place where we find two out of the four carnivorous plants that can be found here in the preserve. Yes. Yeah. They've developed the ability to eat meat. Um, so they, they are a carnivorous plant. My kind of plant. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 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 these are the pitcher plants. We right. saw these in the are them right center. here. Yeah, absolutely. So what? they have a kind of sweet nectar uh, attractant in the plant. And that's actually a trick. And so those bugs go in there thinking, oh, great, you know, I've got a nice orchid or a flower here. I'm going to get some good sweet nectar. And then when they get in there, it's a trap. Damn. Uh, that sweet nectar is kind of a sticky enzyme. Okay. It grabs that insect. It starts to break that insect down. And then they are basically slowly dissolved. The, the, the flies are being eaten alive is the that, way I interpret that. Absolutely. Nature is so brutal. Slowly dissolved. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Let's okay. just see. Oh, there we go. Oh, gross. So we've got you know, some exoskeleton left there. <laughs> Looks like we've got, you know, some insect carcass. And a very efficient death trap. Absolutely. So when you think of the big thicket, you think a big thicket full of trees. Well, one of the best parts of this preserve are all of its waterways. And so Max is gonna take us to one of his favorite spots just off the Natchez River. At first glance, this looks like any other river, but just upstream, it turns into something different. A labyrinth of trees and flowing water. Max, where are we? I feel like we dropped into the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it looks like we've arrived at the, the jungle of paddling routes. No kidding. Uh, so where we are is the Cooks Lake Scatterman Lake paddling route. Uh, this is one of our most popular paddling routes here in the preserve. Um, it's bayou, it's river, and it's this wonderful cut of kind of Cypress Tupelo slough that we're paddling through right now. Give me the definition of a slough. So a slough is going to be very similar to a swamp, but the simple way to think about it, the difference in a swamp or a slough is a slough actually has flow. So okay. even if that water seems quite stagnant, it seems like swampy area, there indeed is a flow there. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Whoa, look at this web. Yeah, so. What kind of, what kind of spider? Those are golden orb weaver uh, webs. Nanner spiders. Yeah. Oh, exactly. there's, they're all over this branch. <laughs> ah! How many species out here could kill me? Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I guess technically there are several things. I mean, venomous snake, alligator, you know, freak accident with a, you know, certain 200 pound turtle, I guess, could happen. But I <laughs> no, guess those, those alligator snapping turtles are nasty. They're, they get to be huge. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, most of our wildlife, I might even say all of our wildlife, really doesn't want to be bothered and doesn't yeah. want to bother you. Wildlife aside, I'm amazed at these trees. Cypress, Tupelo, and others. But these right here are incredible. Yeah, these trees are probably several hundred years old, and most of the heartwood in these trees has rotted out, but yet that cambium layer, that growth layer, is still surviving and keeping those trees alive. It's not necessarily normal. That is crazy. The whole yeah. It's all hollowed out, and it's yeah. over 100 years old. Trees living in water like lily pads. I mean, nature is awesome. Max, I mean, you get to spend so much time out here. It's, what's the most rewarding part of what you do? I mean, the greatest honor for me is really getting to serve the people and share this outdoor space that, you know, I count my lucky stars I get to be a part of. Um, anybody I can share that with and, you know, I can try to inspire, you know, that, that's really what the most important piece and the most valuable piece of the job is to me. That's absolutely awesome, man. Hey, thanks for sharing yeah, with us, Yeah, yes, brother. sir. Hey, oh. thank you. <laughs> If you liked this video, chances are you're going to love another video that's somewhere right about here. Or you can visit thedaytripper.com. But above all, what I want you to do most, remember the Alamo. I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos.